Hi, today I'm going to be showing you how to Today I'm going to be showing you how to track and composite in After Effects that lets you do stuff like this without the motion tracker and without any 3D tracking involved. Let's get right into it. Okay, right before we jump into After Effects, I just want to show the three different examples we're going to be walking through. The first one is some B-roll footage that I shot, and I think this is a really good example to show the workflow and, and how the effect works. The second one is going to be some of the footage from the intro that you already saw, a little section of that to show how the face tracking works. And then the last one is going to be some compositing on some footage of some signs. We're going to do some sign replacement and use the effect to track that into our scene. And I'm giving for the first and third clips the actual download to the clips if you want to follow along as we're doing this. So let's just jump right into After Effects. This is the base shot we're gonna be working on, so I'm gonna play through and show it. I already have it colored and set in the composition. Now, there's a couple things that I wanna show and we'll see later in the problems why this is important to do. But the first thing we're gonna do, actually, is we're gonna pre-compose before we do anything. I'm gonna right-click this and go to pre-compose and we'll just call this Vienna Footage Base Pre. And I'm gonna make sure that move all attributes into the new comp is selected, so the second one, as well as this checkbox has to be turned on, the adjust composition duration, and click OK. Again, I'll show why this is important later in the problems section of the video, but it's important to have our composition first pre-comped. Next, we're gonna bring on the beating heart of this effect, which is warp stabilizer. There's a couple ways to add it. You could bring it up as an effect. So if I just type warp stabilizer, we see it's here, or you could also just right click on your footage and go to track and stabilize and click warp stabilizer VFX. And when I click this, it'll automatically start initializing. You'll see now it's tracking through the numbers. And it went pretty fast because this is in 1080p. Sometimes if you have bigger resolutions like 4K, it takes a little bit longer. So we see that we've just stabilized this, right? And it's a lot more stable, but that's actually not really the effect we're going for. We're going to use warp stabilizer in a way that is not too commonly used. What I'm going to do here is ignore these settings for a moment. And I'm going to come down to the advanced tab over here and turn on the track points. So I'm going to select show track points and we'll see that the track points show up on our clip. We'll also see that when this is selected, the stabilization turns off. So it's as if the effect isn't on it. But what we're interested in is seeing these actual track points. And if I increase the track point size here from 100% to something larger, so just so it's easier to see, we can see that we have all of these kind of jumping around and a good amount stuck on our subject. For this actual example, I wanna be sticking some text above our subject's head, counteracting the movement of the, the actual train and whatever she's doing so that it looks like it's actually tracked in place. Normally, if you were to use either 3D tracking, maybe it would work on a clip like this, or if you were to use the motion tracker, that might also work, but you might have some issues with it. I find this to be the easiest and quickest solution. So with these track points on already, what we're gonna do is go through and delete all the points that we don't need. We don't need it to focus on any of these track points around here on the window, on this person here in the front, on anything on the wall. We only want the track points that are stuck to her head here. That way, when it starts to stabilize, it only looks at those points. So the way to do that with the track points turned on is just click and drag around the points that you don't want. And you'll see they highlight yellow here. And when I just select a certain section and hit the backspace button or delete on Mac, they'll disappear. It'll quickly restabilize. And then we can just do the next set. Now this doesn't need to be perfect. You don't need to get every single point. I'm just gonna delete most of them. And I think that should probably be pretty good. And as we start to scrub through, you can see that points pop up and get recreated. That's because it's tracking different sections of the clip. So we basically just need to go through and make sure that for the most part, most of the points are just on the head here. Scrubbing through, I got most of the points. There's a couple that pop up here that, you know, I might as well delete. It's not super important, just as long as most of the points are on the head. The more time you spend on this deleting unimportant points, the better your track will be. But I feel like this is probably pretty good. It doesn't need to be exact. There are a couple things I wanna show. Like there's some points here where you might see here, like this little uh, cyan point kind of slides a little bit and this purple one slides a little bit. These are gonna be problem points because they're tracking based on this person's hand movement. So I'm gonna make sure I delete both of these. I'm just gonna select them individually, make sure I delete them. Points popping in and out is totally okay. And the ones that are stuck are obviously the ones we wanna focus on, but the ones that are jumping around or have some weird sliding effects, like this pink one right here has a little jump. You can see it kind of jumps there. I wanna delete things like that because those are gonna be some somewhat problematic points. If we go over here now and turn off the show track points, 
we'll now see we have a little bit of a different stabilization. And it's a little bit weird if I play through, it, it's very much stuck to the head and we can see the whole clip moving around it. It's an odd stabilization, but that's because we haven't changed the rest of the settings in the effect. The first thing I'm gonna change is go from smooth motion to no motion. And I'm gonna change subspace warp to position, scale, and rotation. And then I'm gonna select preserve scale. So now when we play through, we have it now a little bit more stuck on the head without any of that warping. The next thing I'm gonna change, and this is the important setting here, is instead of stabilize, I'm gonna select the drop down here for stabilize and set it to reversible stabilization, just like this. And now when we play through, we can see we have the clip kind of rotating and moving. And we see like empty sections around the clip. As you can see here, these little black sections over here, we can see it rotating when she nods her head. This looks really odd, but this is the first part of our effect. Now, the way to actually use this, there's two ways to do it. The way I like to do it is just to keep it in the same comp. I'm actually gonna right click down here and make a new adjustment layer. And I'm gonna select our clip again, go to our warp stabilizer and copy it and go to our adjustment layer and press Control V or Command V on Mac. And we'll see that a an error pops up, a big red error pops up because we need to change it from reversible stabilization to reverse stabilization. And now when we press play, we'll see we have an unstabilized clip. It's as if we didn't even do anything to the clip. However, anything we put now inside, in between these two layers will now be stabilized to what our clip was. So let's actually do that. I'm gonna right click here and make a new text layer and I'm gonna drop this underneath the adjustment layer. And I'm gonna turn off the adjustment layer for a second because this will help us place it. So I'm gonna move this over here, kind of scale it down just for now. And we can change this to whatever we want. We're just gonna use this for now and rotate it a little bit to match her head. Now, when I press play, we can see that the distance between the text and her head stays relatively the same. So when we turn on this adjustment layer that takes our stabilization data and undoes it, then we can see our text is stuck to her head and even brings on that little knot, which is super cool. We could put whatever we want here. You could put a graph here, you could put any sort of motion graphics and it'll be stuck to her head. What's great is it doesn't have to just be above her head. We can also rotate this and move it you know, onto her head. When we press play, it's now on the back of her head. If instead you wanna go with the route of pre-composing and not using the adjustment layer, I wanna show one really important setting. I'm gonna take this, our pre-comp that has our warp stabilizer on it. I'm gonna right click it and pre-compose it and we'll call this Vienna Track Pre. And make sure again, move all attributes in the new comp and this checkbox, the adjust composition duration is selected and click okay. Now we're gonna jump into our Vienna Track here and I'm gonna copy our warp stabilizer and go back to our Vienna comp and paste it onto the pre-comp and set it again like we did with the adjustment layer. I'm gonna set this to reverse stabilization. So when we press play, it's now reversing the stabilization. But you can see still that we have these black sections. It doesn't show properly like it did with the adjustment layer. And that's because the only thing you need to select is on the clip, go to the collapse transformation button, which is this little star-like icon. You just need to click it on the layer and it'll get rid of that. What this toggle basically does is it allows our composition to basically see inside our pre-comp to see all the transformation data. So definitely make sure you turn this on. And when we press play, we have the same thing where it basically looks like there's no stabilization on it. So where you would add your graphics now is instead of underneath the adjustment layer, we would actually go into our pre-comp over here and you can make whatever you want. So again, if we make our text and shrink this down and put it above her head, when we now go back into our main comp, we can see that it's the same thing attached just like the adjustment layer. Either works, I prefer doing the adjustment layer because it avoids having to pre-comp an extra time, but do whatever works for you in your project. The next one I have here is the second example, which is the intro footage. It's a smaller section of it just because it was a pretty long clip, but it's all essentially the same thing. So I'm gonna right click this and go to track and stabilize and select warp stabilizer VFX, but I'm gonna hit cancel for a second because we're not ready for it to analyze. There's one thing I wanna do before it analyzes. And I'm gonna to toggle down the advanced tab here, just like we did before and select detailed analysis. Now I know this one works the best for this clip just because I did the intro already. But sometimes if your clip doesn't have quite enough data or you're finding that there's not enough points, then using the detailed analysis can work really well. So as I was talking there, it finished analyzing. And if we show the track points and I increase the track point size, we can see that we have a solid amount of points right here on our clip. And if I scrub through, we can see there's a ton here on the face, which is really good because that will give us a nice solid track. Now I'm gonna delete that because I just wanted to show the points. We need to still pre-compose our footage first because that's really important. And then I wanna show something that you could actually do inside that footage base pre-comp. So let's right click our clip, go to pre-compose and let's call this intro footage base pre. Make sure both of these are selected and click okay. And we can see that it's now the length of our composition. If I open this here, what I'm going to do first is make something called a garbage mat. So I'm going to right click right here and make a new solid and just make this a black solid just like this. And I'm going to turn this off. 
I'm gonna grab the pen tool. So you could hit G on your keyboard or just select the pen tool at the top. And with our black solid selected, I'm gonna select just roughly around my head, just something like that. And I'm gonna scrub through and make sure that my head stays mostly in this mask. You can keyframe it if you want. So if you hit M on your keyboard and select the stopwatch icon right here to make a keyframe, if you need to, you can move around the mask, just kind of a few intermittent points. So maybe I wanna make sure it tracks a little bit better. This is a really, really quick 30 second mask just to make sure that it stays on target. We can see that we have the mask animated around. In this case, I didn't really need to do that. Once you have your mask set and tracked roughly in the area that you want it to show, we need to change this from add to subtract and let's actually turn on the layer. So when I turn it on, we can see that we've covered everything else and now only my head is showing. And the reason we're doing this is because it's just a quick way of sort of deleting some of the points that would show up on the background that we were gonna delete anyway. It just kind of saves a little quick step. And so when we come back into our intro footage comp, we can see we have the black stuff missing here and only my head focused. So when I right click this and I go to track and stabilize and go to warp stabilizer VFX and we go to advanced and toggle detailed analysis. When it finishes and we turn on the show track points, we can now see that there's no points around here on the outside because we covered that. And what we can now do since this is already stabilized is go back into our intro footage and turn off the black solid. And coming back here, those points are still not there. Just like the last one, I'm gonna do basically the same workflow. I'm just gonna increase the track point size so I can see them a little bit easier. And I'm gonna scrub through the composition and delete the unnecessary ones. I really only want it to track on basically the upper half of my head, just like in this section. So I'm gonna go through, I'll fast forward and you'll see me select all these points right now. That took about one minute, something like that for a clip like this. I'm not just gonna scrub through and make sure I delete any trouble points. So something like this purplish point right here is kind of sliding up and down. Definitely wanna delete that. So let's actually turn off our track points and let's change those settings again. I'm gonna change this from smooth motion to no motion, subspace to position scale rotation, and then change objective to reversible stabilization. And now I'm gonna right click and make a new adjustment layer. And we're gonna copy our warp stabilizer from here and paste it onto our adjustment layer and make sure we change it from reversible to reverse stabilization. And now when we press play, we can see we have our basically nothing stabilized footage, but of course we know now we can put anything in between. So I'm just gonna right click and let's just put a new text here and I'll just type skymography and put this roughly above my head like this and let's drop it underneath the adjustment layer. We should see that the text stays attached to the head. And you can see even when I move a little bit to the right there, the text stays and we have that tracked with it, even when I do that little head tilt. So this is a really, really quick and easy way to track. This would be really great for an intro shot of a video, or if you're saying like a certain quote or important sentence, you could track things on you or on whatever you want. And it's really not that long to do. Okay, the last one here is the sign. And this is the most quote unquote complicated one, but it's really not too complicated. This will just involve us going a little into Photoshop to do some very basic painting, but I'll show exactly how to do that right now. The first thing is let's do our pre-comp. Let's do the same workflow first. We're gonna right click and go to pre-compose. Make sure these two are selected, click okay. And then I'm gonna right click and go to track and stabilize and select Warp Stabilizer VFX. The analyzing finished, but before we do the track points, I actually wanna see the stabilization of this. So this time I'm actually gonna do it the other way around. I'm gonna select Smooth Motion and change it to No Motion, Subspace Warp to Position Scale Rotation, and make sure you select Preserve Scale, which I don't believe I did in the last example in the intro footage, but I guess for that example, it wasn't necessary. I forgot to do it, but in the case that you have some weird scaling issues, make sure you have your Preserve Scale option checked. Now, when I press play, we can see that it's actually already pretty stuck. I don't think we need to do too much with the track points. <laughs> there really is no motion already. Let's turn on the track points though, and let's increase them so we can see them. And I think because this clip is relatively simple, there's not a lot of extra movement, like there's no person walking by or anything. We don't really need to do much, but honestly, if we turn off the track points, we can see like this is already pretty stable. So I'm gonna go through and do a really quick cleanup, but some clips like this don't really need too much work. It could already be done off of just the basic stabilization. So what we're gonna do here is I basically wanna paint out part of our clip that we wanna put our own stuff on top of. So I wanna remove the two subjects here and remove the text and the little bike icon. The best way to do that is to take a frame from here, bring it into Photoshop and use some stuff like generative fill to remove them, which is what we're gonna do. Before we do that though, because some of this bottom sign is cut off, I'm gonna change it from stabilize crop and auto scale just to stabilize only. That way it zooms out a little bit more and we can see the full sign. It doesn't actually matter because we're gonna be reversing it anyway, but for our case so that we can make sure that we see the full subject, I'm just grabbing one of these frames. So I'm gonna scrub through until 
something like that looks good. I'm not worried about the black bars because we're gonna mask this out anyway after we finish in Photoshop. So to save a frame from here, I'm gonna go to composition, save frame as, and select file. And it'll open up the finder. I'm gonna save where I wanna put the base image. So I named it Geneva base image. And it says Photoshop here, but I'm not worried about that. We're gonna click save and change it from current settings to best. And where it says Photoshop, I'm gonna click this and change this to JPEG. And make sure under format options that we are set to maximum quality. Click okay, click okay, and just hit render and it'll save that single frame out. It's instant because it's just one frame. We're now gonna jump into Photoshop and I'll show how to paint this out really easily. The image is imported into Photoshop. Let's get to painting. This will be really quick, especially if you have the newer versions of Photoshop, which have generative fill. I'm gonna select the lasso tool here. So clicking and holding this, select the lasso tool. I'm gonna select just roughly around our subjects kind of as close as we can with a little bit of margin. It doesn't need to be perfect. You could of course spend more time if you want, but for our case, this doesn't really matter because it should do a good job, just as long as we're selecting with enough outer margin so that it grabs everything. And now that we have our selection, all I'm gonna do is select generative fill and click generate. And we'll see that it did a fantastic job already. We have three options. All of them work. I say the last one is the best one, but it matched our lines and the texture of the sign. So that was literally all we needed to do. By the way, if you select with your lasso tool, any section, and you don't see the contextual taskbar here, if you go up to window, make sure that contextual taskbar is turned on. So just select this and it'll turn on just like that. So I'm now gonna do the same thing with the bottom sign. I'm just gonna select all the way around all of these, just like so, and click generate, leave it blank, and click generate again. And there we go, we have a perfectly blank sign for both of them. So that's it, we're done in Photoshop. I'm gonna select file and go to export, export as, and I'm gonna save this again as a JPEG, make sure the quality is max, and save it in the same spot that I did before. All right, looking in our file explorer here, I have the base one right next to the edited one. We're gonna import the edited one. I'll just bring this into media, and let's bring this into our Geneva composition. So I'm gonna click and drag this and drop it on top, and let's turn it off for a moment because we still need to do the reverse stabilization. So let's make our adjustment layer. I'm gonna right click, make a new adjustment layer, make sure it's at the top. Select our Geneva footage base that we tracked before, copy our warp stabilizer and paste it onto the adjustment layer and make sure that we change it to reverse stabilization. We did also forget to change this to reversible stabilization. So I'm gonna do that on the bottom one and there we go. So now we have our basically not stabilized footage, but again, that's because we have the sandwich set up. So when we turn on this, we can see that it tracks and stabilizes with it. Now this looks really weird because we haven't positioned our sign yet. And the first thing I'm gonna do is mask around this sign. So I'm gonna hit G for the pen tool and I'm gonna do my best to do kind of just a, as clean as I can, a quick mask around the sign. And I'll fast forward through this right now. I did a quick mask around the sign being as precise as I could. What I now need to do is just make sure that it's lined up. So I'm gonna hit T for opacity and I'm gonna lower down the opacity on this. So a really easy way to do this is if you hit Y for the anchor point move tool and we select the anchor point, which is over here and you click and drag it over to one specific point. So I'm gonna zoom in here to this little corner circle. I'm gonna make sure that this is lined up just right. And it is already, which is good. But in the case that it was something like this, and let's say that you have it, you know, maybe scaled wrong and you're trying to position it just right so that it's scaled and, and positioned just right. This is a really great way to do this. If you line up a specific point, so in our case, this top left corner circle and you move the anchor point with the Y tool and move it over here. Now, anything you do on rotation and scale will do it around this section. So it's good to start on one point that has a solid reference and then you can scale this down and it'll scale down according to that point which just makes it a little bit easier if we zoom into the other side to make sure that it's just the right scale there. And we can see that the texture lines up really nicely. So in the case that your images don't line up or whatever, that's a really good way to make sure everything is perfectly in place. Let's bring our opacity back up to 100. And now if we zoom back out and turn on our adjustment layer, if we hit play, we have our same shot as before with the track, but now we have a blank sign. So let's do the same thing with the other sign. I'm gonna turn off the adjustment layer. I'm gonna duplicate our Geneva sign and hit M for masks and delete the mask we don't need that first one. Let's now do it around this circle. Now this one I'm gonna do a little bit more rough because we didn't edit these pixels here. I'm just gonna do kind of a rough circle around the shape of the sign. So let's zoom back out and let's turn on our adjustment layer. And now when we press play again, we have both signs completely cleaned up. This is our base canvas. This is where we get to have fun with it. What I'm gonna do here is pull in an asset I got from Envato Elements. And let's for now turn off the adjustment layer again. I'm gonna scale down this asset right here. This is just a walking asset I got. And if we hit play, we can see that he's just walking in place on our sign. Let's also add a couple basic effects. I'm gonna bring up a fill effect, just the simple fill. And let's change this to 
white. And then let's also throw on a posterized time effect. And I'm gonna set this to something like six to make it a little bit choppier. So now when I press play, we see we have our animation on top of the sign. But if we zoom in here, we can see that our asset here is really crisp and clean compared to a lot of the texture and the sort of white discoloration of our sign. So to do a little bit of fixing on that, let's just do a couple quick compositing tricks. On our fill, I'm gonna change the color with the eyedropper tool, and I'm gonna select the white of our sign, and that'll match a lot better the actual color of this. I'm then gonna make a duplicate of our Geneva sign, the blue one here, and bring this above our asset. I'm then gonna drop a tint onto this to make it black and white, and I'm also gonna select the track mat here to show only on our silhouette man here, and make sure that the man is turned on as well. So we'll see that now we have the texture only showing on top of the man. Now if we change the blend mode from normal to something like multiply, and then add on our levels effect, we can actually pull the right side over until it gets to just about the right color that we need with some of that texture passing through. So now we have texture from the sign passing through onto the man and it looks a lot more composited into the actual scene. Of course, you could always lower the opacity if the texture feels too strong. So just hitting T on our signs layer, I'm gonna drop this down to something like 80 and we'll see that looks really nice. The next thing is some text animation. So I'm gonna right click and make a new text layer and let's do something kind of dramatic because why not? A little Nathaniel Drew-esque. Let's do two lines right here just like this. The question is, where are we going? Because where exactly is this guy walking to? I'm not gonna animate it in this composition. I'm actually going to select both, right click and pre-compose. And this will make it just a little bit easier so we have a little bit more control after animating them. And let's name this sign text pre and make sure we move all the attributes and this as well, click okay. And let's now jump into the comp and do some really basic text animation. Now, you could of course animate the text any which way that you want. I'm gonna do something pretty basic that uses the transform effect because it's one of my favorite ways to animate text. What I'm gonna do is bring on the transform effect just like so, and let's actually keyframe the position. Now, if I hit U and we move this over a little bit, let's bring this down to start somewhere, let's start it really low, somewhere like here and select both of our keyframes, hit F9 to easy ease, and then go to our graph editor and make sure we're on the speed graph. And now I'm gonna select the right one and pull it to the left and the left one and pull it to the left as well. So it starts fast and eases in. Now, something I like to use is a plugin called Text Exploder. And if I select it to words and click apply, it'll then split it into the three different words. And we can now offset these a little bit, so a couple frames. So we have the question is offset. That's one way to do it. There is actually another way to do this effect using a preset built into the newer After Effects. I believe CC 2023 and beyond has these newer presets for animating text. I'm gonna bring up my FX console, but this will also be in your effects and presets. Search, and let's just type slide and, and we'll see slide and pop in under presets shows up. When I select this, our text will disappear. And when I hit play, we can see that it pops in from the top. Now we can tweak this a little bit so that it actually comes in from the bottom. If we change the Y offset to something positive, like way down here, we now have a similar animation to the one that I just did. Now I'm gonna leave it in, in my method, but that is another way to animate text really easily. It's a really great preset for quick text animations if you wanna do that instead. I'm now gonna do the second line the same way that I did the first one. I'm gonna select one of our layers here and copy the transform and paste it on the first frame of our second line and then go to our text exploder and select apply and it'll split the words. And then let's just offset this by a couple frames each. Now when I hit play, we have the question is, where are we going? Great, back in the main composition, I could bring this over and scale it down over our sign, but there is a little bit of a problem because there is actually a little bit of perspective in this sign. So the way that I would rather do it is instead of using scale and rotation on our composition, I'm actually gonna use something called CC Power Pin. So I'm gonna bring up the effect CC Power Pin and I'm gonna turn it off. I'm then gonna bring in the corners to roughly where our sign's corners are. And if we zoom in here, I'm gonna make sure that they line up so that the edges of the sign match the yellow lines of CC Power Pin. Now, when we do that, we have the effect off, so it's not affecting anything, but if we turn it back on, we'll see that our text is now squished in the constraints of our sign. Of course, this is too squished because it's skewing it downwards, but what we can do now is actually add a transform effect and bring it just before CC Power Pin. And if we uncheck uniform scale and increase the scale height, we can see that we're now scaling it to the size that we want. So I'm gonna scale both of these a little bit just so it's a little bit larger and make sure that the proportions are right. One really easy way to check if the proportions are right is if you go back into this composition and let's make a new solid and call it grid and throw in the grid effect like that. What we can do is we can actually make this a square grid, which will help us see a little bit easier the perspective on our scene. If I change these secondary numbers, the corner numbers, 
to plus 100 on both of these. So this is 960 and 540. If I set this to 1060 and 640, we'll see we now have a perfect square grid here. If we jump back into our Geneva composition, we can see that we have our squares here with the right perspective on the sign. And what this can help you with is scaling it. So let's say I had it more like this. We can see that this is too tall, that these aren't squares anymore. So this is a nice little reference to make sure that you're pretty close on your animation. We can now jump back into our pre-comp and turn off the grid. This was just for reference, but that's one way to see with CC PowerPin when you're compositing. I just renamed the layers and also color coded them. So it's a little bit easier to see. We have the blue sign with the man and the man texture right here. Let's bring our sign texture above our white sign so the green layers are right here together. And let's turn off our adjustment layer for now. Let's add a fill onto this. And if I solo our base layer with the solo icon here, and I select our sign text, I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool and select some of the dark area from our sign. So we get just the right color. If we unsolo this, we can see that our sign text is now this kind of bluish gray color. And if we set this to something like multiply, we have the texture passing through and it looks really nice. We wanna make sure that it actually mats into just the sign. So we can do that really simply by clicking our layer and under track mat using the pick whip, and clicking and dragging it over the white sign and make sure that our white sign is turned on. And now we'll see that it only shows up on the white sign here. Let's also throw on one last effect here, which is posterize time and set this to something like 12 for the text. And when we hit play, we have that kind of nice and choppy slide in on the text for both of them. When we zoom back out and we turn on our adjustment layer with, with the reverse stabilization and we press play to watch through, we can now see that we have our fully composited question animation here on our sign. Of course, don't feel limited to only using text and assets like this. You could composite stuff onto people's faces. You could do extra fancy animations with shape layers on the sign, whatever you wanna do. All right, let's talk a couple quick problems that you may have run into when using this effect. The first one is if you aren't seeing your track points. If I click here, I don't see the track points on this, even though the effect is on. Just make sure that you have the effect selected when you have the show track points, otherwise it won't show. And sometimes After Effects will auto turn off this button right here. It'll be like this and the points won't show up. If that happens, just make sure that this button here is turned on. The next problem is if your warp stabilizer gets stuck during the analyzing process, like the number freezes, all you have to do, unfortunately, is save your project, close out and restart After Effects and reopen it and try stabilizing it again. It happens every so often, it's not always consistent, but if that does happen and your stabilizing isn't working, just close After Effects and reopen it. The next problem, and the one that I ran into for so long, I could not figure out the answer to this, is the exact reason why I say it's always super important to pre-compose your footage first before doing any of the stabilization and making sure that you have those second options on the pre-comp selected. The reason is if you have a clip that is shorter than its full length. So here I have the intro footage again, but you can see that I trimmed off a lot of the end and a lot of the beginning. When I try to throw on the reverse stabilization on top of the reversible stabilization, because the adjustment layer is longer and because we trimmed our clip, it just completely breaks. It does not work. And the same thing happens even if you do the pre-comp method where I pre-compose this into here and I throw on reverse stabilization on the pre-comp, it's because it's reading inside this composition, the clip is actually trimmed. So it's important that this needs to have been pre-comped first into a footage base, making sure that the beginning and end are trimmed and that you set this to adjust the composition duration to the clip length. Then you do the stabilization on that pre-comp and then you can do the reverse stabilization on top of that. Following the original workflow is really important. Otherwise you might run into issues where it just does not work or completely breaks. And I ran into so many instances of that until I finally figured out that it's a clip length issue. Hopefully you're able to use this in some compositing or some fun tracking stuff. Make sure to tag me on X or on Instagram. I'd love to see what you make. And if you're interested in more stuff like this, make sure to subscribe because I'm planning on making a lot more videos like this. So yeah, good luck and I'll see you in the next one.